Hello everybody, Luke Schulte, Field of Grounds for Bex Hybrid. Soon many will begin to make your post-emergence herbicide passes to soybeans. Some of you may have already begun. Is it worth adding a fuller feed or fuller nutrition to the tank to make that pass a, a little more profitable? Due to the fact that soybeans vary rather significantly in terms of growth stages, let's dive into what we learned throughout PFR. What is the composition of that fuller feed at different growth stages that's more likely to lead to the highest profitability? When it comes to those V4, V5, applications, the one trend we've seen is products that contain manganese to be consistently more profitable than others. Particularly as glyphosate is a part of our post-emergence herbicide pass, we know that glyphosate tends to, to tie up manganese not only within the plant, but temporarily within the soil. Each of the products as PFR proven at V4 contain manganese, and the Versamax product actually contains sulfur as well. But when it comes to early flowering, or R1, the game changes rather significantly. And believe it or not, Many of our soybeans that were planted at the end of April and early May have been flowering for going on a week now in some cases, even though we haven't quite reached summer solstice. But the composition of those products that are PFR proven at R1 varies significantly. But the one trend that continues throughout all six of those products is they all contain the nutrient of zinc and manganese. Interesting enough, we recently learned that those are two of the three nutrients that have antioxidant effects to the plant, meaning they enhance the plant's ability to tolerate stress as well as to recover from stress. All six of those products, even though they vary in their composition, contain zinc and they contain manganese. And four of the six products actually contain sulfur as well, the third nutrient known to have antioxidant effects to the plant. Now, one last consideration really is based upon what weather prognosticators are anticipating the summer months to be like. As you know, soybeans have significantly higher yield potential than what we harvest. Roughly 60 to 85% of all flowers and young pods abort, largely due to weather or largely due to abiotic stress. Weather prognosticators like BAM or Clarity Weather are very confident and have been anticipating the summer months of June, July, and August to be very warm. Above average, maybe well above average. If that forecast rings true, fuller feeding potassium could very well serve a significant benefit. Potassium plays a lot of roles in the plant, but one of its more significant roles is the fact that it helps the plant to regulate itself, meaning it regulates the plant's opening and closing of the stomata, which is just basically that system for the plant to maintain moisture or to hydrate itself or to kind of keep itself cool by conserving water and being more efficient with water uptake. If we have a hot summer, fuller feeding potassium has a very, very high likelihood of paying consistently. Now, not all potassium sources are the same. Look for products that are derived from potassium acetate. According to the Journal of Plant Nutrition, products that are derived from potassium acetate are much more likely and much more probable to be absorbed versus fuller feeds that are derived from, say, a potassium thiosulfate. Much more probable. So if you're going to use potassium, look for products that are derived from potassium acetate. They're much more abundant than they were five or six years ago. So just some things to consider, regardless of your growth stage, to potentially add to the tank to make that herbicide pass or perhaps that standalone pass a little more profitable based on the growth stage of your specific crop. As always, if you have any questions, give us a call. Thanks for tuning in.